This is Pitch Please, the show where people who play games pitch ideas to people who make them. This week... I think there should be a, a defining moment in this game where it basically asks every player, do you pivot to Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Pitch Please. My name's Alex, and I'm joined by developer Chris from Foggy Box. Hello. Developer James from Catastrophic Overload. Hello. Thomas, the ideas engine. That's me. Hello. And Matthew Castle. Hello. I, I couldn't think of anything that you... Uh, contributor. <laughs> contributor, uh, Matthew contributor. Castle. All yeah. round good guy. Pretty good. Re- all round good guy. Guest <laughs> idea destroyer. <laughs> ideas torpedo. Yeah. <laughs> <Matthew> Castle. <laughs> I've got an idea. Give uh, it to me this week. Give it to me, big boy. Right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the pitch, right? And we need to do a little bit of history, okay? Oh, I thought you were gonna say role play. <laughs> oh, I need to do some role play. Okay. Who do what who am I? A little bit of history first, okay. Oh, okay. So sure. it's the it's the nineteen forties, yeah? It's Hollywood. Ah, okay. Right. In the nineteen forties, I think it was late forties, there was something called the Paramount case. We're in Hollywood, okay? So this is all to do with films, okay? Right, okay. Basically, I mean, the Paramount case was like, it was like the United States versus Paramount Pictures. And Paramount Pictures up to that point had what they called, I think it was called vertical integration, where basically they owned every single part of the filmmaking process from the development all the, all the way through to distribution. They owned the theatres, they hired the act, they had actors on contract. They had all that shit. Uh, so wait, they, it, they had kind please, of a monopoly. Please tell me the game isn't Monopoly. It's it's not Monopoly. It's Monopoly. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, I've made no. Monopoly, I've just realized. Um, <laughs> okay. But anyway, this the, the Paramount case was basically that like the United States saying, you can't do that, actually. And then everything fell apart and it became more of what the cinema is today, with freelance actors and okay. people just, you know, like cinemas doing their own thing all over the place. Okay. Before that, though, the studios had a lot of power. And that is when this game takes place. Oh, that was a lovely bit of scene setting. Thank you. Okay, so this is... <laughs> it's like being in AS Film Studies again. <laughs> I think Matthew got excited because he heard the word court case. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so during the 40s, maybe this isn't 40s, maybe this is even earlier. Okay, we, we could even go back to silent, silent cinema times, but what I'm thinking is... 1800s. The, what, the beginning of cinema? Well, hang on, hang on. Let me, go through, oh. let me get through the idea. Okay, fair. 1600s. Okay. How early do you want to go? The, be- the first image, the first image <laughs> that was created on, on dust oh, in, the oh, bang, in the Egyptian God. tombs. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, but let's say, like, I'm thinking L.A. Noir times, you know, like this is kind of the height of like the golden Hollywood era, like the, the kind of like 40s, mid 40s, like maybe late 30s. That time, you know, when you think of Hollywood, when you think of golden Hollywood. Yeah, that, I, right? I, think, in it, right? I think drastically problematic. Yeah, ex- exactly. Right, all, all that world, <laughs> yeah. awful, full of awful people doing awful things. You're one of them, right? You oh, are oh. the the owner currently? of a studio. Oh, in game currently, okay. currently and in game. Uh, in game, okay. So, good. <laughs> you, you are <laughs> yeah. you are the owner of the studio. You're the head of a studio, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And your your job is to make pictures. You're making pictures, and that involves hiring stars. You're hiring directors and all these crew. And you're you're trying to buy out the you, you know you're making your own theaters to distribute them, uh, like basically every single part of the filmmaking process you are involved in on the on the you know the top level. Okay, and it, it is up to you to manage to to create and manage a successful Hollywood movie studio. Pre Paramount versus United States monopoly case. Yes. Yeah. Trying when to you get have the monopoly. Mega power. Yeah. W- when the sky is the limit, right? You okay. can fucking be God in Hollywood. Is this just Lionheads the movies? Yeah. No, right? Because Lionheads <laughs> the movies was was a lot more, like, from what I remember at least. Actually, Matthew, could you describe Lionheads the movies, please? Well, I'm it, sure you've played it more than it, me. Well, it was, uh, you, you're running, uh, I thought you were running a film studio. Um, but the the at the heart of it, there was maybe a bit more of a creative element in that you were making the films, and you had some input and control over what, how those films looked. It almost had like a strange movie maker element yeah. inside the game, so you could like produce things. Um, I, I'm I, and that's I remember that's what it was like sold on. I don't remember how complicated the business around that was. 
Uh, what, yeah, was so, that Lionhead? I, I thought that was Sims for some, or Maxis for some reason. No, it's Lionhead. It was li I think it was Lionhead, yeah. I oh, think I remember was, that being yeah, a thing, but I, I, ah. I only saw it played on ever. But yeah, so this is none of that. There's no there's no creativity oh, right, in making oh, okay. movies right. at this level. Cool. Have fun. Like the, 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 the creativity, uh, well, okay, the creativity is on a different level. It doesn't come from making the movies. It comes from how you manage how you manage the studio. Okay. Right. I'm totally open to what kind of game this is and where this goes. I have ideas, obviously, but I don't want to go into it too much like I always end up doing. Sure. So, devs, what are you thinking so far? May I go first? Thank you. Um, wow, I'm just yeah, I just cut the allowed, line. allowed myself. <laughs> um, in my mind, the first thing I th thought was a little bit like Lionhead the movies, um, but more like how you see you build your you have your entire you know lot. So you, it's a little bit like sort of theme hospital esque where you build rooms, but then from the film side of things, mm -hmm. kind of like Game Dev Tycoon, where you can you nudge a direction and then you know things tick away and you're like, oh, here's, you know, we got some, you go, I want to make an action film and you can see all the metrics for action films and then you can see your last film that you did and you can, you can then get the, the, like, the audience first screen test through and then you can make tweaks after that. But you have to put points into like different, like Game Dev Tycoon, but without bugs, you just have, I don't know, like you can cut runtime, you can uh, spend more money on like visual effects, spend less money on sound, I think that's mm -hmm. how, in my head, how I imagine. So you have the business side where you do it like, uh, I can't think of what, what am I trying, two point hospital. I'm trying to think of a more modern one. Okay. So you build your lots, you build the rooms, you place things in the rooms and maybe certain things allow certain people like a producer room needs to have certain objects yeah. in. And then you can like in two point where you have schools and stuff, you could have like an acting stage and, uh, and then the sound stage and start building up lots like that. Uh, but then, yeah, you bring that over to the production side where it's much more, you have like overarching control, but you don't physically have to make the things. And then you get those profits, expenses come out, you know, as you build more buildings, more expenses come out to pay for, you know, the land or if you buy more plots. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, build up a, you can make franchises, you can build up your portfolio of films like that. That's maybe there's, you know, the occasional lawsuit expense. Because it was those kind of well, times. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, well, exactly. cut the I think budget. it's going to be a lot more than that. I have some ideas about that stuff, but, but yeah, uh, that was my initial James, thoughts. What, well, uh, uh, Chris hit the nail on the head. I was thinking theme hospital, or most recently two point hospital, in the same way that you would, you know, cut the budget of say your health and safety, and then some of the actors got brained on some, I don't know special effects equipment. And then it's like, okay, now I've got to deal with this. It, I think there's a lot you could do with that. Um, uh, that's kind of yeah. it really. <laughs> yeah, Job done. Go on, Chris. Chris, did you just think of it? So I just thought thing was, um, no, no, not yet. That takes time. That's the, the idea has to percolate. <laughs> Alex, it has okay. to come alive. I mean, at um, the moment it's two point Hollywood. Shh, uh, don't say oh. that. They'll sue us. <laughs> um, <laughs> add a tycoon on the end. Um, yeah, no, sure. I think like, do you know how you get um, oh, what like events that happen? It could be like big decisions that halfway through the film. It's like, do we spend the money and get a real lion or do we use it in visual effects? And then those have ramifications. You know, it could yeah. be like there's a 60% chance the lion attacks your main actor. And it's like, well, now we have to, you know, do we recast halfway <laughs> through and reshoot or do we try and re like animate the actor with yeah. visual effects i think things like mm -hmm. that keep it interesting mm -hmm. um and that i'm assuming the tone of this is silly because i feel like the subject matter could be quite serious depending on the i, I, I mean it's not okay, like so oh, the sexual assault <laughs> and and the you more know we talk about this, in hollywood <laughs> the, more, yeah, yeah. the more we talk about this the more like i'm thinking tonally it's it maybe is something close closer to something like Crusader Kings. <laughs> that was um, not where obviously I was going. Okay. Uh um, <laughs> like obviously like historically there are lots of there are lots of kind of pretty horrific things that you can do in Crusader Kings, right? Like mm -hmm. forced marriages and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But it's on such this kind of macro level now, uh, that you never get fully involved. How, how involved do you want to get? 
how awful do you want this episode of Pitch Please to be? Oh, because no. if we start talking about like <laughs> things you can do, it's going to be bad. You no, know, I, I, I'm not. I'm not going I, into. I don't mean like that level of stuff. But I'm thinking. Well, oh, sorry, I mean, Matthew. You, you had a point. <laughs> no, I, 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 I really like the Crusader Kings thing. I like the idea of a. Uh, you know, because if you think about that particular period in Hollywood, you've got these like big moguls. They're like big characters. Yeah. They are kind of like kings of their studios. I I kind of like yes. the the idea of strategy that plays on like reputation and the people you surround yourself with. Because you know they're trying to harvest yeah. actors. That could be really cool. Mm. Or now, yes, yeah. I imagine the hierarchy in my head now that like Matthew put it that way. Sorry, Alex. I pooed your <laughs> no, idea no, too no, soon. Uh, <laughs> it just it needed someone with the. It just needs someone. It just, just needed really someone else it. cleverer to say it. <laughs> yeah, like so you have obviously you know the owner, then you have executive producers, and it's kind of like your what were they called? Like when you've got the priest and and your you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. war chief like that kind of thing. But they are obviously that, and then you obviously instead of you have your actors, your pool of actors, and you have to like maybe that one doesn't like that yes. one, so you don't put them in a film but then oh maybe he slept with his wife <laughs> and they they you exactly, have to resolve exactly. that all, issue all, all kinds of debauchery going on it's not but then this is okay so this is the other side of it is that it's not like this is this is hollywood right so and this is la so there's loads of weird shit going on right this is not just it's not just actors who have like who have all these kind of like weird morals and stuff and who are difficult to manage and blah blah, blah and um and all that but also You've got the LAPD, no, like notoriously crooked at that point of in history. Well, yeah, um, I was going to say you also have yeah. gangsters. Maybe there's there's different ways in which you can get your money. Uh, maybe you try and align with some some mob peeps, and yes. you're like, uh, we need some money to make the film. Uh, I need you. How about instead? Of given me some money, mob people, because that's what you did in the Hollywood era, I imagine. They didn't, but probably, maybe, I don't know. You send them off oh, to absolutely. other studios to completely screw up their film. They let the lion loose. <laughs> and this is all going to be a, weird question. <laughs> be a yeah. weird question. When did, uh, uh -huh. when did Scientology come about? <laughs> oh, it's a bit later. Scientology was the later? 60s, oh, I think. 50s and 60s. That's a shame. Yeah, that yeah. could have been nice. The thing is, if, if you could go a little bit later into like the 50s, you get into all the juicy, like LA confidential kind of era stuff. Yeah, I'm think, But so the, the thing that I was kind of thinking is that, like, what? So if it is this kind of like two point hospital <laughs> slash Crusader Kings <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, uh, that on top of that, to, like the the problems that you're introducing are things like mob warfare and all this kind of, and you know, like all, all the all the kind of darker side of LA that comes with that, but also things that historically were happening around that time, like um, the Hayes Code, which was I don't know if you know, like I'm sure Matthew knew what the Hayes Code is. Some of you have probably heard of it already, but it's like there was like a list of things that you couldn't do uh, and you couldn't show in cinema um, like around a, like that time, a, like a woman's ankle. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, a man and a woman weren't allowed to be seen in bed. You're together. gonna have to censor um, all these bits for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> Just mm. one long oh, group blink. Boy, howdy. Um, but um, and and yeah, that doesn't have to be historically accurate, accurate, I guess. But like the idea is, I guess that there's there's constant like legislation that's happening as as the industry is pushing it is pushing its boundaries, and you are having to adapt to that. Or you know, flout it like flout those conventions and like and breaks it and and suffer the consequences, perhaps. Or perhaps you know you can you can bribe people to to help change that legislation. You know all that kind of stuff mm. going on. How do you imagine starting? Do you imagine that you've got no company and you're just starting out fresh? You're like in in a in a basement or in a garage somewhere, and you're like, I'm going to start a film production company. Or are you already established? Maybe like lower run compared to all of your peers or whatever but you're you're you've got all the ingredients ready to go i don't i feel like you need something you need like something to start off with right maybe you're making your first pit you've just made your first picture i don't know I, I, what is a good starting point i think um, you would have to start with money and be the head because you need to make decisions right but mm. i think maybe it does work like crusader kings where you know you'd die and then you play as like the you know the co exec who then head. goes up. You get fired. The yeah. son of the exec. <laughs> you get you know, you get fired because there could be like a you know, something comes out about you and then you get fired in your next and but there's a big decision you have to make where you try and cover it up 
but you fail. There's a percent, <laughs> percent chance of failure. We try and pay someone off, and yeah, then that I person think, then moves up. I think that's I think if you, you if you, if you start in a established place, but you choose the position that you start in, and if you click random and you're like, oh no, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <Tom. laughs> Oh, That's God. hard mode. It's 1950s. Come on. Well, it's before that. It's <laughs> before that. What are you going to do? It? You have to say it with the ah. See, you have to have ways people won't know that you're joking. Mm. Uh, so you have to be fully God. voice acted. Then this game, we're we're clear on that. Um, you know how uh, the the the. the, the st- so in Crusader Kings, not to make the connection too, you know, to, to pad it out too much, but it's it's done. It's where been you done. have the your, connections made. you know, where you have like a sort of genetic legacy, where your kids are kind of like a mix of bits of you and other things can go mad. It'd be quite good to have like a maybe like a creative legacy where instead of you know you're not birthing your replacement off because that's weird, <laughs> um, but like. <laughs> The idea of the films you've made and the reputation you have does get passed on. So, like, no matter how successful oh, okay. you are, you know, people, will, you'll always have that stinker that you made 10 years ago kind of hanging over you. I like the idea of, like, <laughs> yeah. you, you having a, to live with, a protege. like, you've made one of the worst films of all times, and that is your legacy. And then 20 years later, if that, if that's how we're doing, like, I don't know how long, when does it end? Like, Because you could do, okay, after five years, you can do a remake. All right, and then you try and <laughs> if you've got that in your IP pool, then you're like, okay, I'm gonna try and remake that. And there's like extra things you have to do to combat the negativity of the first release. I think that and, and like IP ownership is quite an interesting thing to be able to do. You like, is mm-hmm. there places you can then bid for new IPs and and bid for ideas, or are you construct in house? Because having like strong IP is kind of like the film equivalent of like having really strong legs and passing them on to your hearty son. <laughs> You've inherited my IP. Yeah. You've inherited my incredibly valuable superhero IP. Congrats. Rather than like, oh, here's all these like failed art house films, which is basically <laughs> you've got really withered lungs and you're probably not going to make it past 10. <laughs> but I think, right, so this stuff could be like being able to also bring in like uh, who you hire and who you work with should be incredibly important and not just on the act. I think like the actors is something that we, we haven't got to yet, but will be really, could be really interesting, but who you're hiring in terms of producers for films uh, and directors and that kind of stuff on the, on the real high, high level side of things will really affect how, how your film is received and how it's made because you don't have, con- you can't have control over that stuff from the top level. You just have to essentially pick the right people and put your trust and p- put your trust in them. Mm. And like, I don't know whether that is literally a list of, you know, you you press the director's tab or you press the higher tab, and there's and there's a the high window and there's a director's tab, and you're like, this guy is coming over from. Germany. He's one of the new German, you know, new wave, whatever they call it, cinema. What was this so again? I'm going to hire him. I'm going to take a risk on him. Uh, this was no, no. This is what happened. People like so, some some of the golden age of the Hollywood films are made by like these German exiles who have come over and yeah. or German immigrants who have come over and and made like these hugely successful films. Um, and you know, you're taking a risk on unknown people. Uh, who made originally made art house films or something. Maybe as, as time goes on, you gain a reputation with each person, and uh, not not in like a relationship sense, but you've you've worked <laughs> with these directors before. They're more likely to yeah. say yes to come back for your films if they're a success. Or maybe you spend a ton of money on getting this huge name director, and the rest of the production is a t- total failure. And you're like, I, yeah. I, I, I he hates me now, and I spent a ton of money on him. There is no way I'm getting him back now. And then he gets poached by another studio. He's suddenly oh, making yeah. amazing films for them. And you're like, I really wish I didn't make Spider-Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, oh, which was oh, wait, oh, amazing good. Spider-Man 2. <laughs> what am I thinking of? There's, there's so, like, if, you, if you stretch the timeline, if you started in like the golden age of cinema and you actually saw it through, maybe you did like 100 years of Hollywood, say, you do hit these like huge eras that shake things up in terms of the kind of studio direct dynamic that would would create like 
a new act for the game. So like when you hit mm. the 70s and all of a sudden it's like Francis Ford Coppola and Scorsese, yeah. it's the rise of the kind of the super directors. You know, they kill off some studios because you basically have to bet on these like raging narcissists. Um, <laughs> but it has a completely different vibe to like the 40s. That could be really fun. Like, yeah. you know, I, I love games that kind of can tap into the kind of natural changes in you know history of a landscape or whatever to kind of like inform like a different challenge in the game it's a, it's a nice evolution how does crusader kings i don't know if anyone's played enough of it to to know this but how does crusader kings work in terms of the decisions that you make as one king or queen or as one nation like how how much does that influence what actually would happen in history as you carry it forth like do you have a huge influence on what on what happens in like throughout the rest the, the, the rest of history uh, yeah. I mean, yes, but if you're asking if it aligns with actual history, n- no, <laughs> that's the point of the game. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out if, like, for example, like if you're because, like, we were talking about, like, the well, yeah, like Matthew was just saying about like the different acts in the game. Like, say, if yeah, you do reach, you do reach the 70s, and then like what happened in the in the 70s, Hollywood in in our timeline is they were like, oh, we need to we need to try and experiment a bit more. We need to, you know, take bigger risks. I, I think that's um I think that's something that would naturally happen. Like if we again going back to that reputation versus money cost thing, I think that's something that would naturally yeah. happen where you're like, I've I've alienated this director. I can't use them again. I'm gonna keep using my trusted ones and they get big through the films they make. Uh, yeah. or maybe some other guys come along and they've got these huge talent, but they're super cheap and they're willing to do anything to get into the studio. And you're like, yeah, I'll pick him up. Sure. And he makes some amazing films. Yeah. So I think that, that those sorts of things would naturally happen through the play style, hopefully. That's true. Um, so mm-hmm. I imagine it would end up that way anyway, even if it is possible to change it entirely. I think uh, you could like, with all that, I think also taking in the whole, when I'm talking about like, same within Crusader Kings. I know we keep bringing it up, but like random events that happen. But it could be the random events are okay. Uh, sci-fi films now testing well with audiences, and you're like, oh crap! The director who who left, that was his thing. But it, you know, ten years before, no one really enjoyed those. So it's like you do have to think ahead of what sort of you try as, as Matt. You have to bet on the right people to to stay and keep under. Maybe they go, oh, I want, you know, more money. It was like, well, I'm not going to give you more money. So you, he leaves. But then, you know, 10 years later, all of a sudden he's making billions and you're like, oh, if only I gave him more money. I could have actually, you know, I would have gone and maybe dipped into debt, but the, the film I did after brought me back into the black. And I think that's where you could get really interesting uh, sort of dynamics of who you want to keep around because it's not, you know, just about, what's happening right now it's like okay in five years time if i keep them happy what could Mm be i mean that's what hollywood tries to do i mean they do it it's all like ai generated algorithms like who's the best actor to be in this film uh based on (laughs) twitter and it's like great thanks chris pratt mario (laughs) but like you know you're doing that with maybe there's like a weekly newsletter like oh um horror films up 25 percent you're like oh good i'll make a Mm. horror film and by the time that film is sort of written. Um, maybe you have to choose between three scripts and they each have stats on which are like, okay, you know, this has 20% jump scares or this one has more atmosphere. <laughs> and by the time that's all done, you've got to hope that that payoff is still there because, you know, films take right, time see, to yeah, make. Yeah, the amount of time mm. that it's going to, yeah, based on how, I mean, yeah, yeah it's, the same, it's the same to the games industry. People try and catch on to trends, but sometimes the trend is is too late. I mean, look at Battle Royales. Um yeah, sometimes the trend, you're too late to that trend and you just mm. fail miserably. Tell I think that, that to could Squid be Game in Roblox. That's true. <laughs> it's I <was> back, th- <laughs> baby. <laughs> He's back. Did Roblox ever leave? He just sort of left no, it on its own no. in the corner. Considering what Chris was saying, it's like you can have a lot of fun with actual historical events with through, if we're going to travel through time, as it were. You know, around the 80s, you can have the uh, VHS and Betamax fight and then like, how so horror Vietnam. films had a boom within uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that not how they decided well, it? I mean, they just that, lobbed that could be a cassettes thing, at each right? other your act- well, one, exactly. yeah, yeah, one you of your could, actors yeah. is drafted and you're like okay oh I shit. see <laughs> there could be like genuine especially if we're starting you know in the I, 40s I, 
<laughs> I think there should be a there, there's a, like a, a defining moment in this game where it basically asks every player, "Do you pivot to porn?" And that is just <laughs> like that is the decision every person has to make when video technology becomes like affordable. Oh yeah, sure, of course. But then yeah, the internet yeah. comes around, and then you lose all of your money. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, yeah. Right, there we thing. go. But that's but, um, that's a oh genuinely God. interesting mechanic. Like if you look how DVD sales have dropped off. Like that could be a big thing. You're like, okay, I'm gonna because they have to make those in advance. They don't just appear. Yeah, I mean, so like you're putting a lot of money in. What you were saying before, I like, I like the idea of having this sort of ecosystem of all these characters that are across the entire world. Because the problem I have with Crusader Kings is you could look at a nation halfway across the world from you. You're never going to interact with them. There's characters in there that you will never even think about. And you look at them yeah. 20 years later, and it's like, oh, no, Alfredo Puerto's died. <laughs> never spoken to him. And it's now his son is in control. And it's, and there's there's loads of characters there, but you're not interacting with any of them. I like the idea that if you look at a director list, you can see every director currently active. And you could, you know, there's some that are mm. unemployed, so you could hire them. They're untested, sure. There's some that are employed by other studios, so you could try and poach them in some way. Um or some of mid-production, for example, you're like, oh, that'd be even harder to yank them from that, but I'm going to try. Poach mid-production, <laughs> mid-production holy production shit. Well, yeah, that's when you have to um, sabotage the production. Well, yeah, and, and I, I like knowing, you know, these are the actors currently active. How do I get them if I want them? Uh, but yeah. also, I think we should figure out what the product you're actually making in this studio. Obviously, it's films, but how do we actually interact with these products? Like, when you make a film... You know, if it's a total flop, do you then sell the IP for a chunk of money? And then, like, 10 years later, maybe it becomes a cult classic. And you're like, oh, fuck, I sold this for, like, I sold this for, like, 2 million. And now millions of people are watching it because it's a cult classic. This film that I thought was a total flop, I need to buy it back. Yeah, if you, um, yeah. So I can make it. If you own the rights to something, or you own, like, yeah, there could be the whole, like, the storage thing of, like, I've made all these films, I have all this shit in storage, I have, like, the original printed storage, but it's costing me a lot per month, per year, or whatever, to keep it up. Do we just do we just chuck them? Uh, which is what happens to thousands of films which have disappeared and we're never able to recover. I mean, yeah, because maybe, people just didn't maybe think you about could it. formulate some actual, like, you could try and make these events happen where you're like, we made this film, it was totally shit, we're going to burn the copies as soon as we can, and then all of a sudden it becomes this legendary film. Have you seen this film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. the copies are gone. <laughs> It'll be like Doctor Who where they have to try and find people that taped it off the TV and they've yeah. got, like, an old VHS <laughs> on their cupboard. <laughs> Somewhere, but I, I like the idea that there could be actual random events as well. So, like you know, uh, movie studios having bad fires and losing loads of copies of their film, and they're like, "Oh my oh, god, yeah. we've mm. got to like, f- we've missed half of our film. What do we do?" And you kind of cobble together a bunch of footage and stuff like that, or even like a lot of fun super late into production, like you're about to release this film, and then the main actor is involved in some scandal, and you're like, "Oh, for f- fuck, sake. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Guess, yeah." You reshoot like, the whole yeah. film, yeah. Um, yeah, and you don't. Talk about the whole film. <laughs> All we talk or just, about is it, just sit on it for five years and then release it. Whenever that happens, you always get the choice to digitally replace them with Christopher Plummer, and it's just <laughs> always that. that is, it's, and it's every single time there's a Christopher 1920s. Plummer. Nineteen twenties. <laughs> Yeah, just a model get plumber on the phone. Plumber. We got a so we we'll get the plumber. <laughs> I think, like, we we haven't really even talked about um, the like the idea of back in those days when the studios had so much power that you that they were able to control every single level of of yeah. the production and the distribution. And in terms of like originally, I was thinking of it as a kind of like not necessarily a global thing, but just like LA. This is Hollywood. We're in Hollywood. These are the other studios that are here physically on the map. And these are the these are the cinemas that are owned. Like you can literally, you know, you you buy out the cinemas and you own them and you choose what films you're going to put there. And maybe there are certain areas of the city that will like certain films more. And so you, you know, you you can choose, mm-hmm. you can literally like, I don't know whether it's a drag and drop system or if it's like a, I don't know what what that is, but if you're literally saying, mm-hmm. okay, I want these movies played in this particular, in this affluent area, because these are the, these are the kind of audience who are going to watch this and they want this, these movies played downtown mm. um, or whether it needs to be on a bigger level than that. It could be a bunch of like independent cinemas that sprout up and then you've got to try and crush them down because they're taking all your business away. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Do we get to design Destroy the them. cinema as well? I must say, do I, do I get to pick out what cinema? chairs we've got? 
yeah. <laughs> comes to soon. <laughs> Yeah, it becomes the same. (laughs) I feel like that is getting too close to like the movie style, Lionhead style. Like that feels to me like it's a bit granular. uh, Yeah, uh, yeah, like a bit of an add-on thing that probably would be a bit underwhelming (laughs) if you don't get to choose Red Vines or Twizzlers. I think it should be based (laughs) based on the actions you have taken as time goes on. If you've done some really gruesome things, then it's just like a really dark, miserable. (laughs) See it looks in like the cinema. The fucking the Tower of Sauron. Yeah, <laughs> we're really uh, bad guy. With a cinema on the ground floor, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and, however, if you uh, do great, if you're doing a good job, and you're just a nice, nice guy, it's gold. It's like heaven. Well, there's a morality film. system that that is changes the way your buildings look. Is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just your, like your, Hollywood. And the, the studio lot has like basalt spikes coming out of yeah. it, and you're like, yeah. excellent. <laughs> I mean, oh you could, God. it could be like, um, you could go down to the level of like, maybe you don't actually see what, what it looks like on the interiors, but you could be choosing mm. in a theme park style way. Like, you know, whereas with theme park, you're saying, I want X amount of salt in this stand and these drinks in this stand. Oh, wow. Well, you, you can say. Very specific like, want, details. Literally. Uh, I mean, that was on like, very that was on the Amiga and like the, what? Oh, no, sure. Know, but if, like, if it's. <laughs> if it's just like an option in a list, like if you can click on the actual cinema and rather than just like going in and plan and planning it in a kind of Sims way, yeah, if I, that I, makes sense. If you're worry, just saying like these are the key features. My worry is is that if you go so with Crusader Kings, obviously we're mentioning this a million times because I guess it's the bo- uh, most similar in style. I think yeah. if you go really in depth of this is how much this particular soldier is being paid. Like, no one's going to do that because in the grand scale of the game, it makes right, such yeah, a small important. difference. Yeah, I don't think yeah. in, a, an asset, in a, not yeah, in a studio filmmaking running game, I don't think anyone's going to look at the popcorn and say, too salty. <laughs> but you would look at like, are we yeah. paying the biggest star in the world the right amount? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Which are contract yeah. negotiations. Because that is obviously thematically a big, like, like a big thing you could fuck up. Well, the, yeah, that was huge on like, especially back in those days. Initially, like when when the game starts out, as well as that, you you own these actors. You know, they are contractually obliged to make X pictures with you, and mm. I guess the kind of contracts that you draft up, like that is gonna that is gonna affect your reputation and your ability to get other kinds of actors. I've not played Crusader Kings. Shock, right? <laughs> um, what what uh, what does this look like to you? What What's this? What does it look like? What does the game look like? Are you have you just got a lot of pictures of people that are on your employ? Is it just what am I looking at? Two point hospital. I think you're in my head. You're seeing you're seeing a map of like L.A. or Hollywood mm-hmm. um, oh, okay. or that surrounding area. Um, so kind of like Crusader Kings, but in but closer in, right? So you can you can see the streets and you can see all the buildings and stuff, and you're moving around that map. Um, and you have like a bunch of these different windows that you can bring up for stats, mm. um, depending on what you're doing at any one time. Okay. Um, I mean, perhaps like the image, like it could just as easily be an image of you at a desk, but I feel like that's the, maybe there's some interaction there that we can do with the, the map. I don't know. That sort of leads into what I was going to say, because when Tom mentioned earlier about Crusader Kings, where you, you know, there's someone else in the world you're never going to interact with. And then you obviously you, you mentioned the map of LA. It's basically the map of LA to Crusader Kings is they're tight knit countries. Each studio is a country, if, if yes, you yeah. understand my analogy. Um, and I, I click on you know whatever our fake name for Universal is, and I go okay, um, going to talks to uh, you know gain I like get IP or like the things you can instead of like declaring peace, it's like enter. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, IP yeah. talks you see, and you see and their like studio that. head. Yeah, at that's their the desk. high level. Uh, that's the high level stuff. And then if you I click see, on, yeah. you click on your, cigar. you click on your zone, and then you go in. And that's to me where it looked a bit more like your two point hospital theme hospital style. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna place a plot okay. over here, but that's gonna cost me this much because that land. I also need to buy a plot of land over there because that is a big part of it. You do need space to make these movies. Otherwise, you could expanding be expanding like, your territory. Yeah, but otherwise, you could you could say you know um, you know film on an external lot it would cost you this much but or i could spend a million and i can make loads more movies here it's what well, it's 10 times more the amount i can you know mm. and then i don't have to keep paying external um and then going in more granular to that as be hey there's a new movie 
what do you want to make? And you tick the, okay, I want to make a sci-fi thriller. And then I drag the mm. production like budget and I go there. Okay. And then I'm going to drag the visual effects slider to, you know, three out of five. And, I and think then it gets into a bit more game slider of how many ankles. How, many yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how high does the skirt go? Uh, I am sorry. I just realized I've got my leg out. I am oh, on that'd be great if the, oh, meter sure. was, if the meter was actually a leg. That you're raising. <laughs> <laughs> but it's capped. It's hard capped until time goes forward. Yeah, you can't go say, from, from a visual point of view, there's something that I really like the idea of seeing like a film unravel in front of you. So you see the actors filming scenes or you see them building sets and, you know, you can fast forward time and you can just see it all start to come together. Yeah. And then if stuff I mean, goes wrong, yeah. I mean, the Sims did that right, you, with Sims Hollywood. Could it be just like an overview of, of your lot? Um, and you can see people moving about, wandering around outside, coming out of their trailers, building sets, all that kind of stuff. I, I, I was imagining it like you just see it as almost as districts where you click on this building, this is doing this thing, and you assign it right, jobs right. or change the budget or whatever else. And you see who's in charge of this part of the studio and they're doing their thing. They're getting angry. Why are they getting angry? They aren't getting paid enough. Okay, I'll need to figure that out. You click on another area, reduce their wages, whatever, um, <laughs> and treating it like, in a way, like Kerbal Space Program with the uh, actual space uh, thing that you're building. You can click on the individual buildings and just see the jobs they're doing. Um, like Which this is a, a research purpose. area. Yeah, this is a research area. This is the tech area where they're trying to, you know, find out about all the brand new cameras that are being built. Wow, this one can film in 460p. <laughs> <laughs> what about, um, I mean, true to Matt, like, obviously, was it Matt that suggested Crusader Kings originally? Might have I think been. it was, I don't remember. Think. Someone oh, did, but someone yeah, like Matthew, what, what was, was your, suggested. Um, what's like, how are you seeing this? Yeah, I, I I I must admit I'm more interested in like the personality idea of it. I really love the idea of like Hollywood is like business but also meets celebrity. So people have you know, people have good business sense, but you're also up against people being famous and the clout that comes with that. And that's to me seems like quite an interesting kind of mass of people to kind of negotiate um, rather than like the nitty gritty of the individual like buildings and things like that. It's, it's more like I'm much more interested in like the big power players and yeah, the yeah. kind of top line stuff. Um, I'd also, I, the, the good thing about setting it in the olden times is that you have um like studios who have people on staff, basically sort of they retain actors. And I do like the potential for comedy in having to like fire people when you think they're past it and just having to say like, you're done, you're done in this town because that happens, that happens a lot. <laughs> you're a woman and you're over 35, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Well, yeah. there was there was a point where like where I think was it late twenties when they switched over when suddenly sound came in, and from so nowhere. many of the big actors who were who were from silent cinema just stopped being employed because they sounded weird. Like people didn't <laughs> like their voices, so they just hired a bunch of people who had much better voices and acted, you know, more appropriately for sound. Isn't and you'll that, have to do all that kind of stuff. Isn't that the yeah, entire plot? That's what I'm in for. Cruelty. What film? <laughs> film was that? Oh, the. The, was it the artist? The, the artist, the, the, yeah. You know, the one that, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, bam. The wow. artist, the, the game. <laughs> I made a um, film reference. Holy shit. All right, I, I, God, I, yeah, again, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that I want to kind of still chat about, but we, we've got to finish. Um, we do. And uh, I don't know, like Tom, I kind of, I went in, well, not really knowing what this was. I feel like I've made a, like we've basically made a game that is too complicated for me to play. Uh, <laughs> for my brain, but I'm really excited. I really want to see it. I, uh, I, I feel like this might appeal to your kind of. I can, I, right? I can, I can, I can see it. But I think again, we've all got slightly different visions. Like I, I like again, yes. again, Crusader Kings. I like basically taking that format and and shifting it over. So you've got your studio, that is your nation, and you click on the different buildings, and there's all your experts doing their things and you're the studio head that's you know running the entire thing maybe one day you get ousted and you get taken over by someone else and you play a different role in the studio to try and build your way back up or blow your way back up and then you zoom out <laughs> and you see the all line. the other studios you see all the <laughs> other studios play. doing their things you see their you know there's a line going from this studio to this cinema they've just released this amazing new film and their popularity is going through the roof and they're gaining tons and tons of money what actors did they use to to make this film. I've got to try and grab Com Trues 
which is actually the name of a band, but I've got to grab, grab <laughs> Com Trues because he's doing great right now to make Mission Impossible 4. How do I make Mission Impossible 4? I Mission need to buy the Mission IP. Mission Impossible, Tom. Let's keep it. <laughs> I need to borrow yeah, money from free. the mob. I need to, to get borrow to afford money the big from the plane mob. Scene. Or send some people over there to fuck up their production. Let loose the bear to maul the actor. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I, I, like, I, I, I like it a lot. I think also there should be... Um, a way to fund uh, audience research as well, and that can help you a ton. Like if you put tons and tons right. of money into audience research, you can see people. Are, there's an inkling of sci-fi coming up, and you can gr- go ahead of the curve yeah. and try and generate the new films for an audience that don't even know they want it yet. And then one of your producers, <laughs> oh, I love this, betrays you and takes that info to Universal. <laughs> Studio. I don't know why I changed the word studios. Studios. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you press the Christopher That's Plummer excellent. button. You're like, get Plummer to sort him out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just the work work. All right. Well, I, mean, I like it. I think, I think it's, it could be something that could be put together quite nicely. It depends how nitty gritty you get with it, though. I don't think we should be changing the amount of salt in the popcorn. Uh, I think I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, I agree. But also, I think maybe... To, to deciding where in America we're sending these films. Are we sending this uh, risque gay film to Texas? No, no, no. <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> Chris, final thoughts? Yeah, I really like it. Like, it's it's interesting. I like, I think people like films and, you know, everyone thinks they could make films. Good observation. And then, th- thank you. Uh, everyone <laughs> thinks they can make films or, you know, but... I like the the Can you? sort of backstabbing that goes with it from from the olden yeah. days, the lawless times. Yeah, the old yeah. west, the Gents. old west of cinema. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the kind of game that I normally go for, um, as you can probably tell from <laughs> from my contribution. <laughs> but uh, there's something that I really like about the idea of there being real characters, and you know that you could try and win them over by sending them a car, or like you know you've got all these gifts that you can interact with each person with, and rogue I think directors, yeah. and I think that I think there's a lot of fun to be had there. So I, that's I, the side of it I'm thinking of, like. Crusader Kings, but light and, and made yeah. with you know with with more character, more approachability. Dumb mm. Crusader oh, Kings, Kings. <laughs> yeah, dumb, yeah, Crusader Kings for dummy. Uh, Matthew, what what are your yeah final I mean, thoughts? That that's that sounds like a dream game. I love hearing about complex politics in and strategies in Crusader Kings. I'm too thick to play it, but if you frame it in the <laughs> language I understand of like t- stupid movies and popcorn, uh, yeah, I, I'd I'd actually be really be up for this. Holy shit! All right, you've no done it. Alex. You're doing this one. You've what a refreshing, it. what a refreshing pitch from the usual drivel that we get around here, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. You're telling me that this was a refreshing... Okay, let's just go back to the core of this pitch. No, sorry, it's Crusader go. Kings, go. but film. Fuck's <laughs> sake. You're right. Yeah, I have actually just done that. I have just done, done one Crusader of the worst Kings, things. <laughs> Tom loves the most. Look, I'm sorry. If, if, if anyone, if you, yes, you, listening, any of you... Me? Uh, ...have any ideas of how... No, not Even me. you... Have any ideas of how this might play out uh, in your head? What it looks like? What things you would put in or take away from what we've said? You can just just let us know. Uh, I where, I don't know where though. Where is it? I can't think. For the life of me, Tom. No idea. Where can they let us know? No clue. All right. Well, James, um, maybe you know. No, I don't think I do. I think it's got an O in it, or is that gone now? <laughs> I think that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, it's pitch please pod with no vowels. Oh. I took it out, uh, and then I forgot to update. The YouTube description, so it's even more confusing. Yep. Yep, uh, yep, yep. I've done that now. It's updated. Uh, thank you. Please let us know there. Also, if you're listening, uh, just rate, rate our podcast. Give it, um, I don't know, whatever the rating system is on Spotify. Is it it's stars? Uh, five it stars. It doesn't have one. It only supports it doesn't uh, have five one. stars. So we're at 100% on Spotify. Stars, Thanks yeah. very much, everyone. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you. So thank you. if you could comment and just say the, word, the words five stars, that would be great. I think that counts. Um, <laughs> Just five stars. Not, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Chris, I don't think you got enough credit for the Christopher Plummer does the wet work. Thank joke. you. <laughs> <laughs>